welcome welcome to this morning session where we are doing uh v3 and in uh v3 we are up to lecture 12 yesterday we went through this lecture there is um we talked of a recap of the steps of um, the exercise exercise 2 and basically about the interaction of the self with the body how we look at physical facility as a need of the body and i see myself as a separate entity distinct from the body with separate needs separate fulfillment from the body all of that that we spoke of in the say in the uhp2 workshop that we tried to directly see through the exercises through reflection through contemplation so as we churn this information within us and we try to see if we are able to bring it in our life in our living in our day to day living then we are able to have some idea of how much we have imbibed of this and how much is just in the thoughts so for this uh we had given some reflective exercises two of them were there we'll start with the first one that if we are able to see by direct observation that the need for continuous happiness is the need of the self and this can be fulfilled by the activities of the self and not by physical facility then in the light of this now find out the need of physical facility for keeping the healthy body and for participating socially and estimate this quantity that is required do you have more than what is required do you feel prosperous or do you think that you need to have more so with this if you have any thoughts any observations any reflections we can share them uh, the need of the self is continuous happiness mm-hmm. to have that the the provision of physical facility is only in partial fulfillment but to have the continuous happiness it is the activities in the self uh, mm-hmm. so uh, the i have to assess the need for the phys- physical fa- facility uh, then uh, uh, i have found that uh, actually there is a there is having the rat race everywhere uh, in our atmosphere in your climate that everybody wants that one having one car having two more or one building having to have another building or something and like that no end to the fulfillment of the physical facility so mm-hmm. for that reason people are involved in illegal activities corruption and all that and that is the root cause for our dismantle of our society and in myself also i have found that uh, at a certain period of time there is no necessity of money so then to maintain the uh, the body and to have peace in mind the self it is more important so therefore we should always check that uh, how much is required and if it is the fulfilled then we must feel satisfied and no more for grace for the accumulating the physical facility i have 
be seen there. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, true. See, I would say even not that there is no physical facility required. As long as the body is there, some physical facility is required. But if we are very clear about what the physical facility is for, then it makes all the difference. In fact, uh, what we keep saying, you know, if my, if within me, I am not happy, if within me, I don't feel fulfilled, and I don't understand that my need can only be fulfilled from within me, the physical facility cannot fulfill my need. So when I don't understand this, and I, a lot of times may just be going by the assumption that I am body. So I think that my need will be fulfilled through the body. So I think that I need more and more and more physical facility, like the loop that we were showing yesterday, you know, make sure you're not caught up in that loop. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of times we get stuck in that. And we see things outside. We see this one is doing this, that one is doing that. So why not me also? But if we really, you know, start looking inward, we find that this is not going to lead to my fulfillment at any time because my need for happiness is a continuous need. Don't get satisfied with all this, no? what we are accumulating. That can only be useful for the body. But the body's needs are very limited. So I keep accumulating in the hope that it will lead to my happiness. And unfortunately, many people live their whole lifetime without realizing that this need for happiness has nothing to do with money. You will find, you know, people who are living even in squalor, in little shanties, in in, uh, you know, sort of small slums. There also you can see people who are happy. Just if they are getting some food to eat, they are happy. At the same time, you can also find many people who are extremely rich, have more than enough. And they tend to you know, not all, but many a time, they are so busy in accumulating more and more that they don't realize that their happiness is still not there. It is, you know, sometimes towards the end of their life that they realize that all this money is not really worth what they thought because initially they thought, when I get all this, I'll be happy. But when they get there, they realize that this doesn't have much to do with happiness. So we keep building things around us. Bigger house, more cars, you know, bigger, more material in the house. All those kinds of things. More bank balance in the bank. But then, as a person, as a human being, as the self, my need for happiness, does it have much to do with that, that we don't see? In fact, a lot of times, it is much later that we realize that the joy that you get or the happiness that you get from trying to get more and more is very minimal as compared to the joy that you get when you give whether you give physical facility, whether you give you know, the gift of understanding or whatever it is, your participation with the other, that is what gives you that satisfaction within. And that, uh, you know, as we awaken to the higher activities, that we are able to see. So this physical facility has a very limited role and it has a role only so far, so far as the health of the body is concerned. Beyond that, 
there is not much role of the physical facility for our happiness this part should be very clear for all of us yes yes uh, on the contrary i have found also that the daily laborers they are uh, working very hard but they mm-hmm. seem to be very happy yeah that's what because physical facility doesn't have much to do with that see if you have good relationships if you are um you know feeling it's a state within you doesn't have much to do with the outside not to yes. say that all laborers are also happy if i don't you know as a laborer if i don't have understanding i may be quarreling with my relatives with my friends and so on i may not uh, you know be able to see my participation with them and so many other things so ultimately uh, you know not all some of them it is not the one that is important what is important for my happiness is to have the understanding and that is a requirement of all rich poor whatever isn't yes. it yes thank you Mm-hmm. Uh, that if you know, we are observing ourselves, then we realize that uh, oh, I have sufficient. Mm-hmm. Times we are not even observing while purchasing things the need, whether the need is there or not. True. So it is very important to be aware, to be observing yourself that whether I need this or not. Then only we will have this feeling. Because I have seen people who are having so much, but still they are, you know, whenever they are going out, they are buying one thing or the other, mm-hmm. and many things they may not be even using. They are just mm-hmm. here and there, and then that house it becomes, you know, small for them. <laughs> Their house, all then all those things which they have ne- never used, they just throw those things away. It, I see it in my. around my in inner and around my family also yeah many things they don't use but still they do not have this feeling so it is important for us to know what is required and what is not required and regarding yeah. number 2 uh, the about this eating of food whether it is nurturing the body or not mm-hmm. uh, i used to fast observe fast even um, no when i was in college also but then i left it and now i again observe fast on few days twice in a week i observe fast and sometimes it's three times also so if i am you know seeing what food i am eating what kind of food it is it it is definitely affecting my body so when i am fasting there are certain kinds of foods that i am not taking so fasting is one of the way to you know self regulate the body to care for the body but many people they do not take fasting as the self regulation so this is what i have observed that when if i am fasting if i tell the oh, this today is ekadashi i will not eat this this so oh, why you are doing all this bhuke reh ke what will you get so they think that this is for religious reasons but this is not to, for religious reasons this is for for the body also this is what i observe that this is not only for other reason but one of the major reason of fasting is for self regulation of the body also so that the body needs some get some time to rest also this is what i wanted to observe share sorry yeah, see i uh, you know yes while it is true that ekadashi and things like this have been sort of brought into religion so that at least through that process people are able to see that you know this is something that is good for the body because there is only you know we we don't give any rest to the body we keep overloading the system with more and more and more and more and the body you know cannot it doesn't have time to come back to its harmony yes. so at some point we have to keep giving little rest so ekadashi is 
once in 15 days now i wouldn't say we fast every three times a week not necessary but we see the bottom line is to understand the self as separate the body as separate yes. then to look at you know the needs of the body to see that the body needs food but in a limited quantity yes when we keep eating for taste then we don't see that limit we keep going beyond the limit of the body in the body you can see it doesn't say anything body doesn't have a choice so we will keep feeding the body and then it becomes obese and then there is you know all kinds of problems disharmony in the body so you'll find that we are the ones who are creating that and when we you know if we understand the body better if i understand myself better then if i can look for that fulfillment within i can find fulfillment within then i don't have to keep looking for fulfillment outside then i don't go, keep going after taste you know to uh, satisfy the self because i can see that if if what happiness or joy or pleasure i get out of eating something tasty is very very minuscule as compared to the happiness that i can have inside me with the right feeling so naturally then you stop looking at this taste for happiness now you use taste as a means for um, you know what is nurturing for the body so with the taste we can tell you know something has gone bad it's not fit for the body for consuming then we don't eat it so we can use that taste for what it is meant for rather than to utilize it for trying to get happiness out of it that's very yes. Yes. and also when it comes to the physical facility part you were mentioning about others i think our focus should try to be on ourselves yes can i see that you know everything in my house i may be having many things yes even i have many things didi many yes. that yes. i so have we, we yes. can start looking at whether we are rightly utilizing the things we already have yes the first thing that lot of people say when you know they go through the workshop and they go through this information and all is that we stop buying unnecessarily because earlier it may have been that i don't see that i have a cupboard full of dresses but i go outside and there is a sale and i buy something more and bring it not really looking at what i already have that i have so much more than what i can use in a year and still i keep bringing more so that part gets reduced we can also look at like i said utilizing what we have so if we are not using something for quite some time you can see that you know you can give it to somebody who can make better use of it Yes. share it with somebody so if i feel prosperous only then i share if i am feeling deprived then i keep hoarding accumulating i don't want to share with others and in fact it is a burden for us because in the house then you have to keep dusting you have to keep cleaning you have to keep you know managing all this stuff which is extra which is not being used no yes yes so all of that we have to try to see for all of us yes thank you yes thank you dipika namaste madam uh, even though uh, i was taught and uh, i learned the need of need for the continuous happiness is uh, the need of the self but it is not the need of the uh, body uh i have been uh, able to uh, uh uh search the happiness uh, in the through the activities of the self to some extent 
mm-hmm. not completely what i have observed i know mm-hmm. that uh, even though suppose if i search happiness in uh, the material objects uh, i don't get it because i'm searching where it is not even then uh, uh, i search uh, the happiness uh, in them also to some extent mm-hmm. so but the uh being feeling of being prosperous uh, is increased but not completely what i have observed even though i know it is not there but to some extent uh, i want things outside uh, that i have observed madam yeah so now we have to start seeing it's true what you are saying yeah 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 uh, madam we have us i mean you are sharing it many people may not be sharing it but it's true that lot of times we go back to our old ways ah yes madam because inside that fulfillment we cannot see fully yet ah so we because that happiness from inside we are not able to get fully so again and again we start looking outside for the happiness mm, yes ma'am. but we need to be very clear that whatever physical facility you gather mm. it's not going to make any change in you as uh, you the self you as a person Madam. right so we may dress very smartly we may wear you know mm-hmm. very fancy clothes mm-hmm. but if you really recall you know when you have friendships mm-hmm. what do you really cherish that the other person is dressed well or that you can relate to them that you can have a good relationship with them yeah madam yes, really sir? really being related is a... yeah so if my child you know my child who is grown up is settled somewhere else comes to visit mm. what is important to me that he should come in a big car with very good clothes mm-hmm. or <laughs> yeah not at all you are able to ha- share yeah, with my yeah. mother so you will find that ultimately it's not about the physical facility at all we have this confusion because we have equated ourselves as the body mm. so we think all our needs have to be with you know through the body but my needs are for feelings like respect like trust but i think that i have to get it through the body so then i wear you know branded clothes or i you know get an extra car or a bigger house because i think i will get respect this is not you know how one gets respect one can respect you know anybody from any walk of life without a physical facility coming into it if i am clear about what is respect no yes madam yeah so like that we have to start seeing more closely now and even for the physical facility like we were talking neetu ji and i we have to start seeing how much we already have then you will find that we are already prosperous i don't need more in fact i have more than required then when i feel prosperous then i share what i have with others and when i share that then that gives me further fulfillment within it's very amazing how you know you think that by giving away something how can you get happiness but you see like we were just talking about the pleasure that we get out of getting things as compared to that the happiness that you get when you give to others because you are participating with them you are seeing your relatedness with them so when you give that happiness that you get is far more than that little pleasure you get when you get things and once you experience that then you start you know moving in that direction yes madam really thank you thank you madam thank you for your observations uh didi i would like to share that after this uhv the change what i observed is 
that physical facility earlier also i was very uh, i mean limited in that but after that was uh, after uhv i could observe that what are the extra uh, things which i am not utilizing so earlier my opinion was that if it is something very good then it should be utilized by my family members only and uh, now after that i can see the relation with others also the people who are working with me i can share i could be able to share those things with these people also yes. but uh, regarding the taste part uh, still for some uh, kind of food i have that uh, liking that i could not able to see the health part of or the nourishing part of the body but it is for very uh, limited food but uh, for other uh, i can see that uh, i should take only when it is required and the quantity also but still for some some uh, food items i have that craving that uh, i could not able to control that yeah. i would like to share yeah so i think the important thing to see is not that i have to try to control this and i have to tell myself stop it don't eat all that but rather i move to towards trying to understand things trying to have that fulfillment from within because ultimately yeah. as you reach for the higher the lower will start dropping you will you know it will be easier for you so it won't be like you have to force yourself to drop it ah, but yes. Yes. you will not yes. self not feel the need for it because you are so satisfied from within if my cup is full within yeah. me i yes. don't look to fill it from outside anymore because it's already full yeah yes for physical facility i have that kind of satisfaction mm mm-hmm. so now i don't go for to market for purchase of all because i know i have so much that i not, need not require to look at the mm-hmm. shop to what is new coming up or like this yes nice very nice thank you thank you devi so um i think we can go now to the next chapter next lecture lecture 13 so if we can have this slide for that yes that was quick so module 3 like we said it's we are talking about the activities of the self and in this lecture we are going to talk a little bit more about the higher activities of the self next slide so this is our path of movement from where we start and where we are moving towards or we want to eventually move towards and for which we all have the potential so if you see this you know the lower left corner you see that the lowest activity in the self the selecting tasting the expectation part that is active and we said that this is largely the case in animals but as human beings also we'll notice that we do that much of the time like for instance taste is one thing you know that we look for good taste and on the basis of that what we like we keep consuming more what we dislike we avoid and same is true for all the senses so we are largely living with that as our focus as we keep moving up a little bit we use more and more of our faculties so then analyzing and comparing using thought 
um, logic, those kind of activities, you know, we we those become active in us. So you can see that these are one level higher than just the selecting tasting. And of course, you know, the feeling, the desire. A lot of times, since we are not awakened to the higher activities, we don't understand this desire. So we keep, you know, looking outside. And all our desires are linked with the outside. Whatever is our preconditioning, you know, whatever we have heard, whatever we have been taught, whatever uh, our past experience, that decides our desires. And of course, the sensation part, the selecting, tasting part, the part that we are, what we like, the senses, what is pleasurable to the senses, we keep going after that. And so that becomes one major source of the desire. A very small percentage of desires actually comes from natural acceptance at that phase. So you can see in both these cases, it would be what we refer to as animal consciousness. Because we are not able to get the guidance from the higher activities and this uh, you know being at the selecting tasting is okay for animals it is fine for animals to be in that state but when it comes to human beings if we don't understand and because we have a choice to make these selections we keep confusing things because we are uh, you know, not taking any guidance from above. So everything is related to the outside. Basically, we are living life as if we are the body. Because somewhere that assumption is very strong. But we have to move from here. We have to go beyond this. We can't keep living only with the lower activities of the self because my need is for continuous happiness and I cannot get it in this manner. We have tried many things, but we are able to see that that is not leading to our goal of continuous happiness. So even though right, you know, when we start, our imagination may be largely based on sensation and preconditioning, eventually we have to move beyond it. Because we have this need to know, we want to see things the way they are. And we have the potential also. So ultimately, we have to awaken to these higher activities within us, the potential within us for our own fulfillment, not for anybody else, not because it is the right thing to do, but because I, it is my need. It's not just something that um, I can choose to do if I want, but I, can, I should be able to see that this is my need. Without that, I cannot do without that because I become unhappy. So this transformation, this development has to take place. So I have to awaken slowly. And you can see this arrow showing you know, the movement up an opening up of the first activity in the B1 block, the contemplation. So when we are going from down up, we go one by one. So for a long time, we may have been just working with the B1 block. But this is a major shift. This transformation begins from awakening to the activity of contemplation. And this activity of contemplation is linked to 
seeing my relatedness with other units seeing my role in this existence with other units what is my participation as i awaken to this now this becomes the guiding force for my desires so rather than getting you know uh, my imagination rather than being motivated by the outside through preconditionings and sensations now this when i awaken to the activity of contemplation this becomes my guiding force for my desires so my desires start getting defined in this direction as we go further we awaken to the activity of understanding that has to do with understanding the innateness the self organization in every unit in this existence and seeing what is again my role in this when i understand the self organization in every unit including myself that i feel happy when i see my relatedness with others when i am in line with my natural acceptance when my imagination my feeling is in line with the imag- in, with the natural acceptance then this leads to happiness in me this is part of my self organization so i am able to see this also i am able to see the self organization that is there in every unit and how these units are participating with each other so i also see what i can do to be supportive of this or to be at least able to understand this and not hamper it and eventually you know i awaken to the activity of realization of course all of this will happen only when i keep paying attention if i am looking outside i am not paying attention inside then this transformation how will it happen so for it to happen i have to pay attention inside and i have to keep referring to my natural acceptance because ultimately that is going to help me open up awaken to these higher activities so see what is my feeling and refer to the natural acceptance see if it is in line with that or not and as i do this these higher activities you know i awaken to them and then with the activity of realization i am actually able to see the space to be able to see the submergence of all the units in space and with that then slowly all of these are now guiding all my lower activities so my lower activities get defined my desires get defined it becomes in line with these higher activities and ultimately then this reflects in my behavior so this is what this is where we need to reach we may be somewhere in between but at least if we know where we have to reach we can also see where we may be but we can also see that if we you know work on it if we pay attention inside then this is what is possible that potential is there in each and every one of us yeah next slide so this is just showing those higher activities that we are talking about within the self awakening to the b1 block awakening to the activities of contemplation understanding and realization then i you can see things in that holistic perspective then i see things the way they are rather than through my own assumptions 
and this we try to do in the exercises also. But this is something which is an ongoing thing. We have to keep paying attention inside. So every day, if we spend, you know, at least half an hour, some time during the day, reflecting on this, paying attention within, slowly we awaken to the higher activities. Yeah, next slide. So if you look at right understanding, right understanding is essentially when you, when we say you know right understanding right understanding right understanding is seeing everything the way it is seeing the reality the way it actually is not what it seems like to me through the gross eyes through the sense organs of the body because right now what i see my focus is on that which is changing. There is a whole lot of variety, but my focus is largely on the form, the shape, the form of units. And that keeps changing. I am not able to see that which is unchanging. For that, I need to look through my higher activities. That I cannot see through the gross eyes. So therefore, I have to stop trying to see things only from the outside. Of course, I pay attention outside also, but I also pay attention inside. I don't leave that practice. As I keep paying attention inside, I am able to see more and more of this part of the reality, which is definite, which is continuous, which is universal. So like we spoke of, you know, the activity of contemplation. This activity of contemplation, like we said, has to do with seeing our relationship with other units, the natural characteristic of every unit, how every unit is related to every other unit, and it is participating in the larger order. So with that, I am inspired and I see my role. How, you know, what is my role? What is my participation in the larger order? And I go with that. As I awaken to the activity of understanding, I am able to see the innateness, the self-organization of every unit in this existence. I can see that things are Working well, there is a harmony. Things are not random. Things are not just happening. That things are in a certain harmony. And closer to myself, I can see this is true of me also. That there is within me also this innateness that I want to be happy and I want to be happy in continuity. And only when I have a feeling that is in line with natural acceptance, I feel happy. Whenever my feeling is not in line, I am unhappy. I cannot change that. That is part of my innateness, my self-organization. So like that, we are able to see for every unit. And again, I see my role. That at least I should not hamper this harmony that is already existing. I just need to understand it and live with it. And ultimately, with awakening to the highest activity of realization, when I awaken to that, I am able to see directly the submergence of all the units in space. How every unit is coexisting with every other unit in space. So this is what we need to awaken to, to understand. So ultimately, there are only nine things to understand. What are those nine things? The innateness or the self-organization of the four orders. Remember, we talked of the four orders in nature. The physical order, the bio order, the animal order, and the 
human order. So those four orders, the self-organization in them, the natural characteristics of the four orders, the same four orders, to be able to see their um, the natural characteristic, their relatedness with every other order, how it is and how they are participating, to be able to understand that. And ultimately, the coexistence. The coexistence is the same for all. All the units are submerged in space. So these are the nine things that we need to understand. Yes, you can take some questions here. Uh, Ma'am, uh, actually today is a uh, World Environment Day and everybody is uh, planting trees. So what is your opinion on this? Uh, uh, environment means just a tree. What? World Environment Day. We are celebrating in our college everywhere. We are celebrating uh -huh. World Environment Day. And everybody is planting trees. Environment Day. Ah. Yeah, so, so environment means only trees. What do you think? So I don't think so. So having undergone this UHV, so I see environment uh, means a lot of other things. Yeah, certainly. So we can, uh, you know, instead of going in the car, we can go on bicycle. Then you are, you know, not polluting the environment. There are so many things you can do. Yeah. But why just one day? One day yeah. is just a reminder for us. But this has to be, you know, if I understand things the way they are, then I will participate in every way possible. At least... To, somebody is planting trees look at it like this at least there is you know increasing awareness of that because that is also a requirement isn't it we have been cutting down trees yeah, yeah, yeah. the whole attention is shifted to that only trees and so nobody is something no human human relationship nobody is uh, so no human human relationships is never talked about when you say environment yeah so why don't you make a difference you know yeah <laughs> you are always free to do that in your college isn't it yeah yeah but i always so after um, um, uh, undergoing this uhv you know i always speak about human human is the most uh, uh, damaging or uh, influencing uh, factor in uh, environment yeah, see everything is important right if i understand things then i will be able to live my you know relationships you know be have fulfilling relationships with other humans and also see my relatedness with every other unit so if i think i can you know do something by all means you know we should do whatever we can do in our institution so you can you know talk about what you have gathered what information you have gathered what you have been able to see for yourself share it with others mm -hmm. isn't it but we can also see that at least people are planting trees at least that much awareness because that is also required but many more things are required i agree and we can participate in that if things are not happening right Right now, my focus can shift from, you know, seeing that as something that is lacking and feeling unhappy about it, to seeing my role in it, my participation and going ahead with that. So that will give me more satisfaction within. We can do that. Yeah. Hmm. Yes, ma'am. One more question from yesterday's uh, material. Uh, yeah. Actually, the self-regulation, yeah, only people with right, right understanding will be having self-regulation or, or everybody will be having self-regulation. See, that self-regulation is that feeling within. Yeah. Listen, I have the feeling of self-regulation for the body means I have a feeling of responsibility for the body. Responsibility for what? 
that I have to nurture the body, I have to protect the body, I must utilize it rightly. So where will we get this from? So we'll get it with the understanding of myself, understanding of the body, seeing okay. that, you know, I am responsible for the body. The body is just a tool. It cannot okay. make those choices. I have to make those choices for the body. All that okay. I will understand. And with that understanding, with that feeling of self-regulation, then I take care of the body. Mm -hmm. Okay. But if I don't understand, then I may not. Isn't it? Mm. Thank you. Okay, we can go further. We have some more time. So... So this uh, chart we had looked at earlier also, the chart of the nature and the four orders in nature. So it's a busy chart, lot of information is here in this, but hopefully you recall, we'll just recap what we had spoken of about these four orders and in the next module we will also take it up again but here just to see the context of since we are talking about all the units so in the first column you can see the four orders the physical the bio the animal the human order and some examples of the units in these orders so in the physical order you know soil metal air water all this is uh, units of physical order in the bio order plants trees shrubs all this is part of the bio order in the animal order you have all the various animals the birds and so on and in the human order you have the human beings now if you see in all of these orders Remember, we were talking about some things that are changing and some things that are not. So in this also, you can see the activities. How we classified into these four orders is on the basis of all these characteristics of these various orders. So the activities are of a particular type then if you look at those things that don't change you know, the innateness the self-organization of the units you find some characteristics of those in specific orders the natural characteristic that is the participation of every unit with other units in the existence. That, you know, relatedness of one unit with the other, that which is unchanging, that we can see in the various orders. And in the last column, the, we are talking about the inheritance, how it continues generation after generation. What is the basis for that? How it happens? So these, you know, we will look at, if you start with the physical order, there are activities of formation and deformation going on in the physical order. So you have, you know, soil. Something is getting formed, something is getting deformed. Isn't it? You have um, rocks. You have metals, you have like here, you know, we given the example of metals. So you have something like iron. There is some interaction with the air and there can be formation of rust. So there also, if you look at the chemical reactions, you will find for everything there is something is getting formed, something is getting deformed. If you look at water, 
hydrogen and oxygen are coming together and forming water so like that something gets deformed and something is formed what was in the air has now changed into what is water and so on so like that you will find in all the physical orders physical order units if you look at the innateness of the physical order it is innate for every unit in the physical order to just exist it exists that is part of its self organization it's just there if you look at the natural characteristic how it relates with every other unit so you can see composition and decomposition so in that case of the water something is getting composed something is getting decomposed so many things many examples we learn in chemistry also so you will find this in the physical order and if you look at the inheritance it is constitution based if its constitution remains the same this is going to continue generation after generation this is also important for us to understand see these days we use various uh, things like microwaves to heat food and so on we need to do all this you know technology is great we can use it for many good things but we need to do it with understanding so there is talk of you know that the food constitution gets changed when you heat like this i don't know the the you know the details of it but there is some doubt about this that the constitution may be getting changed now if we don't understand things if i don't see things the way they are if i don't understand how things are there in the existence then i may interfere with this normal uh, process normal way in which things are existing so one has to be cautious about or at least understand things so that at least we don't interfere with this we don't have much time now we are almost out of time so we just looked at the physical order but we will continue with this chart tomorrow the bio order the animal order the human order and uh, for today's assignment we will reflect on if we go back to the slide on that that first slide of transformation yes so this is what you know we have to reflect on where we are and what we are doing to move towards our aim our goal of realization